Hi there, beach friends. Today we're going to take advantage of a nice low tide on a lovely late October morning down in the Marco Island area. My beaches over on Fort Myers Beach in Sanibel are not accessible and I really don't have any idea when I'm going to be able to go back to them again. So I might just have to get used to that hour plus drive down to Marco. Fort Myers Beach has a ton of work to be done and I do hope to share an update with you soon. But what I can tell you is the Marco Island area is looking pretty good. I didn't see any debris on the main streets and while I could tell a hurricane came through by the way the palm trees looked I suspect this area will be back to pre-hurricane conditions pretty quickly. Now, I'm ready to share what awesome things I encountered on this beach trip. So if you're ready to, let's go to the beach. Now, we did have a pretty major uh, storm come through not too long ago, so there are still beach advisories, at least over here in Marco, about storm water, uh, wood, debris, metal, things that might be in the water. So I'm wearing my shoes anyway. It's going to be just fine. This is a nice morning here on the south side of Marco Island. And again, I'm here at low tide because where we're going, you can only access at low tide couple of shells here and that's fine this that's great this isn't where we're going to spend a majority of our time so I'm not overly concerned about what's here but I do get quite easily distracted by shells here we have a Sunray Venus clam that is hinged and then this truly made my heart sing I was so happy it's a little fighting conch and it's alive so I was so happy to see life and it was feisty so you can't really, I know it's kind of hard to kind of t tease apart what part of the critters we're kind of looking at here, but there is a trunk, there's two eye stalks, and then its body with that little kind of semicircle looking thing on the end of it, that is the operculum. So I was absolutely thrilled to see this critter get it safely back in the water. Now, speaking of water, and a lot of people have asked me, or were you concerned about the water conditions? Some of the water is being tested down here in at South Margo Beach. Look at that, December, as of the 31st of October, the water quality is fine. So please do your research. Um, I'm not gonna tell you where, I will leave you a link of where I do my research in the link below. And when you come to the beach, you can see things like this fine pen shell. That is a sawtooth pen shell. And here's another live critter, super happy. So this is a live apple murex. And again, I was really thrilled to see something at the beach alive after all of the, the poor critters that I did see over on Kais the last time I went to the beach that did not make it. So when I go shelling here at South Marco, kind of walk around these jetties here. I can only get here at a low tide. Today's going to be a negative low tide. So I will have a little bit of time to spend over here. Check this out. So this is a live true tulip that is attached itself to a mangrove seed. I don't I don't know why they don't eat that. So that's kind of weird. <laughs> here is an apple murex. Empty, collectible, fantastic. Here's some more live weirdness. So that is another live apple murex. Now that is attached to a piece of a pen shell, that like nacre. Here is a paper fig. Look at the inside. Oh, it's broken, we can't keep it. Because there is a banded tulip, a live banded tulip inside that paper, fi paper fig. Weird, I don't know why. Here's another paper fig. So now I'm kind of <laughs> thinking, ooh, maybe I can find one I can keep. I mean, I could have kept that one. I just chose not to because it was broken and chipped a little bit. Let's see about this one. There we go. Now that is a paper fig that I'm gonna go ahead and hold on to. So cool looking paper fig. And we're gonna mosey our way around. 
around those rocks. And as we're moseying, looks like I was distracted by a lightning whelk as well as a horse muscle. Kind of cool. I thought it was an operculum, but it's not. It's a muscle and a lightning whelk. Ooh. All right, more, more distractions. That's a lovely horse conch. Fantastic. Is it albino? I don't know. I can't tell if that was albino or just bleached out from hanging around at the beach for a while. Here we have another banded tulip. Empty. Wonderful. So, yep, haven't even made it around the, uh, the rocks yet because all of this fun stuff is kind of floating around here. I see some olives. Yep, a piece of an olive. There we go. Beautiful pointed lettered olive. Fantastic. All right, still making my way around the corner here. Water, I mean, as you can see, it's a little bit cloudy, but clear enough that you definitely can at least see a little bit. I would say the clarity, you know, about a foot of water, you're going to be able to see through and really, really determine kind of what's there. So super excited to get around this corner here. That is a live Apple Murex. I got a little bit of resistance, so I didn't pull too hard. That is a fighting conch. That's a lovely shell, but I don't think, yeah, I'm not going to hold on to that. I try to not collect those until the end of my trip because they are so very heavy. And a shark eye. Beautiful little shark eye. Now, theoretically, you could use a hand rake to kind of scoop at some of these shells. I did not bring mine today, so I'm just going to be relying on the low-hanging fruit, the stuff that is really just easy to kind of pick up. That is another shark eye, and because of its size, I'm definitely going to hold on to that. Ooh, I see something else caught my eye. Yep. Beautiful color on that lightning whelk. More color. Alive. Yeah, that's alive. So, not a keeper. I do not collect live specimens. They should stay at the beach. Nice. Calico scallop. So here we have a bivalve and a worm snail. Wonderful. And another calico scallop. Fantastic. So nice variety so far. Kind of seen a couple different things. Excellent. And this is kind of what this area looks like. And again, you can only really kind of walk around that jetty at very very low tide so it doesn't happen all the time i really i just wanted to walk on a beach i know i went to kais kais is great but you can't really walk in the water the way even you can here i'm really kind of missing my fort myers beach in sanibel but i will make do look found this chestnut turban kind of fun that also makes me think of turner beach over on captiva where i would find lots and lots of those chestnut turbans Gorgeous fighting conch, but there is a creature in there, so we are not going to collect that. We are just going to admire because I do love those orange shells. But that little creature is going to stay here at the beach. Lovely sunray Venus clam. Fantastic. Oh, that is probably alive, and I'm saying that, yeah because the color, the, the shells that have a really deep, rich color, a lot of the times they are alive. So it doesn't hurt to check as long as you don't hurt the critter. And I'm going to tuck it back in, kind of dig a little hole and leave the critter where I found it. Check this out, friends. All right, so this is a big lump, right? Is it empty? Okay, it's not alive. Next thing I expected was a crab to come crawling out of it, but no. That big old hunk of lightning whelk? Well, it's mine for the taking. Should I choose to keep it? And I got to tell you, I, was, I wasn't convinced I should take it. Eh, should I? You know, it doesn't really have a lot of color on it. 
but I heard from afar you all screaming at me. So I did decide to keep it. At a minimum, I can at least put a plant or something in there. And it was a big, old, heavy hunk of shell. So that went in my backpack. Something like that might be a little bit too big for my shell bag. So luckily I had my backpack with me and that shell did come back with me. Beautiful morning. And again, so grateful to be at a beach, have my feet in the Gulf water, exploring, seeing what's out there. This is a live crown conch. I'm not going to pick this creature up. It's going to leave it be. But I can tell out of the front there is a little black piece that is the animal. It's, on, it's probably on the hunt for a snack. So again, just kind of take a peek. Let it do its thing. What do we got here? Oh, well, this is another live Apple Murex. Yep. Again, super happy that I'm seeing live critters. Yay! Love seeing the live critters. And another Sunray Venus clam. Oh, really cool. So it's hinged. Super fun pattern on that. Hinged Sunray Venus clam. And this is a different one. This has got a different pattern. And so that's, I don't know, it interests me. They're all different and they just kind of, like, what's with this one? Is it big? Is it small? The pattern? It's like checking it out. And since the tide is going out, kind of left this little bit. There we go. It's quite, it's negative 0.23. And it kind of left this tide pool. So I wanted to kind of at least peek, see if there's anything interesting over here. We got some lumps. We got some green stuff. Some fighting conks. All right, no real, you know, concentration of shells that I need to be paying attention to. So I figured just walk up here, see what's to see, and then kind of go back where I really like to go, right at that water's edge. A serith. So that is called a dark serith. Kind of a fun bumpy little shell. All right, little bit of orange. And that is one of those Florida horse conks. It's our Florida state shell. A lovely little horse conch. Oh, lots of fun stuff here. What do we got? Okay, that is a banded tulip. That looks like it's been hanging around the beach for quite a while. And that pear whelk. Now, normally because the color is really rich and really kind of dark, that's something I would say that perhaps there's a critter in there. But we're super lucky. It is empty. We can collect that. And then we have a wonderful juvenile fighting conch. A couple of more lovely shells. All sorts of funness. Okay, what do we got? Another juvenile fighting conch. And once I kind of get down, I'm really kind of looking at crushed pieces. It's not really tiny as well, with the exception of this little olive. So that is a little shell, but the rest of them are just kind of broken. So I'll just kind of scan and see if anything pops out. All right, we have a little serif here. So a little olive, a little serif, a little fighting conch. Oh. And a lovely banded tulip. Yeah, I kind of have a hard time resisting those as well. And is it empty? Okay, so fun. All right, that one's kind of knobless. Should really have knobs on it. That is a fighting conch, but it doesn't really look at the scene like that one. Gorgeous, excellent, it's empty. It's got some pretty nice knobs on it, but not that guy. Oh. Really fun. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep them both. Big old lettered olive. Oh, those are so fun. This one is not really shiny and pointy, but I'm going to make an exception because it is so large. Oh, all right. Let's look at the coloring on this beauty. Yeah, it's got some of those stripes and zigzags going on the top. Yeah, gorgeous. Gonna have to keep that. Oh dear, I'm in trouble. Yeah. Okay, we have banded tulip. 
probably hold on to that. Let's see. Let's see if any of these are keepers. Okay, it's a little bit pitted, so I'm not going to hold on to that. Yeah, it's okay. Yep, that one's okay too. All right, I guess that's not really, nothing wrong with them. Yep, they're all just fine. Uh, I see it, that one. Yeah, that's the keeper. I gotta be a little picky or else my bag is gonna weigh like 75 pounds. Yep, beautiful fighting conch. Okay, based on the shape, I know that that's an alphabet cone. Ah. Oh. But it is quite beat up, pitted. I'm not gonna hold on to that. That's one of those, I wish we had met sooner shells. So this is one of the many docks that are down here. And so yeah, Hurricane definitely came through here. The docks are quite beat up, missing all sorts of pieces. So the destruction is is real it is here and i heard something out there and i turn and i look <gasps> no way so it's a, it's a dolphin just jumping for joy we gotta take another look at that again i wish i had been quicker so yeah it literally was just jumping for joy and at least i got to capture that one and that made me really really happy knowing that the critters are out there just having themselves a good old time yep another sign Things are gonna be okay. Yep, no shortness of shells here. Now this is the end of October when I'm here and that's when the shelling typically kind of starts getting better. Winter months are typically better to find shells. That is a pear whelk, but with the hurricane, I don't really know what it's gonna to do to the pattern. So we're, I'm just gonna to have to kind of wait and see what happens. This, I would say, for all intent and purposes, a pretty good late October day to be here. There's lots of shells and a nice variety. And again, because I can't go to my beaches, I'm happy to have my feet in the water. Checking out, oh, more happiness with the dolphins. So they're feeding and playing Again, love seeing that things are kind of returning to normal, or at least I hope they are. Hope that's a sign that the dolphins are okay and they're doing their thing. Here's another critter. So this is an apple murex shell with a long-wristed hermit crab. Seems very, very comfortable in there. I don't think we'll be saying hi, so we're just gonna take a peek. Yep, apple murex shell leave that critter at the beach. Wonderful, a Florida cone. Very cool. Oh yeah, that's an <laughs> it's gorgeous. Beautiful color, it's like that light caramel color. Yep, that's really pretty. Gonna have to take that one. Yep, no shortage of wonderful shells here. A lightning whelk. So pretty, I just love them. Gorgeous color on that lightning whelk. And they will lose that color, much like that big one that I got was almost vacant of color. As they get bigger, they lose their color. And this, I just saw some color just kind of poking out at me. Oh, it's a bummer it's broken. That is a zigzag flat. Those are very collectible. And even though it's broken, I'm gonna hold on to it because like I said, they are very collectible. Lightning whelk, yeah, that one's a little bit chipped up. Oh, another critter, make me so happy. So this is a short spined sea urchin covered in shells. They have little tube feet, so they will cover themselves with shells to protect themselves. They think they're hiding. I like to think that they're getting all dressed up to go to the beach. And I, of course, love anything that also collects shells. So I think that was pretty fun. So that is a short spined sea urchin. And that 
is an empty apple murex. Lovely, lovely shell. Another lovely murex. Cool. It's got a juvenile fighting conch with some really nice patterns on it. Oh, yep. Awesome shell. Here's another. Okay, excellent. So that's another apple murex. It's a wee bit green, but no problem. It's empty. Very nice. Very, very nice. And a channeled duck clam, also known as a sailor's ear or an elephant ear. Kind of a neat, a little bit on the thin side. That is a channeled duck clam. This one was kind of neat. So this is a rough scallop. They're called that because it actually does have a rough texture. What I found interesting about this one is it kind of looks like it went through like a growth spurt. You can kind of tell where, or maybe it, maybe the food was a little bit less, but you can tell something went on with that critter and it had a, either a growth spurt or it didn't have food for a little while. This one is a calico scallop, real pretty. Real pretty calico scallop. Now that is Dickman's Island out there and beyond that is going to be Kais. So I'm still, you know, it's it, I'm on Marco Island proper. That's the 10,000 islands out there. Great place to look for shells, but this isn't too bad either. Stay on land and kind of walk around, seeing what we can find. A white Atlantic semele. Even though they have that really kind of strawberry coloring on it, it's a semele and a common nutmeg. Cool, I haven't seen one of those today. And in this area, it's also possible to find albino nutmegs, which are really, really fun. It's always cool to find something that's just a little bit unusual. This is an auger, common auger. And when shelling in the water, I try to be very, very careful. Critters like, to, especially those augers, they like to, little tiny itty bitty hermit crabs like to kind of hide in there. Nobody really, I don't find many critters inside the top snail. So that is a top snail. The only critter I've seen in a top snail is an actual top snail. <laughs> oh, a fighting conch. Got some pretty neat coloring on it. Yeah. That is beautiful. Beautiful fighting conch. And even though I'm mostly looking at my feet and seeing what is on the beach, I do try to pick my head up and appreciate the beauty around me. It was almost impossible to not see the dolphins. They were making noise and as you could see earlier, hopping around and it was just, it was so wonderful just to be surrounded by life and hearing the birds and seeing the creatures and just again, <laughs> looking for those signs, everything's gonna be okay. So at this point, again, it's just beautiful surroundings. So I think we should enjoy a little bit of beach time. hear that osprey. The osprey was really kind of yelling. That is a bird that you'd heard in the background at our beach time. This lovely little shell. This is a calico clam. I do really like those calico clams. Actually, there's not really that many shells that I don't like when it comes down to it. Even this, this Eastern Atlantic slipper snail. I just think they're kind of neat. They're always white, always really on the flat side. I just think they're kind of neat. Oh, and a kitten paw. Yeah, that makes me think of also Fort Myers Beach and Sanibel and the beaches up north, but apparently they have them down here too, as well as a purple tagalus. Okay, neato. Another 
purple thing you can find at the beach. Oh, and another shark eye. Terrific. So there's another moon snail called a shark eye. A true shark eye. Awesome. And a little bubble. Oh, that makes me think of Wentzel traps. Don't think I'll be finding any of those today, though. Beautiful. And again, I would almost think that that is alive, but it's not. Pack full of sand. Terrific. Lovely pear whelk. What did I spy? Oh, another little horse conk. Terrific. Usually the orange, maybe that yellow color. Kind of fun. Do like that color. And I cannot, I just, I'm sorry. I can't resist the prickly cockles. Just love you turn them over and they have that awesome sherbet coloring. Awesome kind of like prickly on the other side. Gorgeous fighting conch. And it's that orange. It gets me every time. Oh, another orange. This is more like that rust color. So those fighting, not fighting conchs, that's a horse conch. And they will, again, like we've seen the yellow, kind of that bright orange. It's a little more that rust orange color. This is a bay scallop. They can be white. And again, that rust orangey reddish kind of colors. Lovely. And here is some calico scallops. And those tend to really be whites, pinks, purples. Sometimes they have that like burst pattern. Very fun. Very fun shells. So really grateful. Again, grateful to be out. Grateful that there's things to find and share with you. Uh oh. All right. So this very, very common. This is a crossbarred Venus clam. Super common. And what I just find interesting about them is they are sometimes orange on the reverse or purple and they will get worn down, they kind of get ground down and all you're really kind of seeing is the purple. And it's funny because people will send me pictures of these. Can you tell me what this is? And it's funny, it's just a, another kind of version or that shell that's in a different state. It's not perfect, it's not new, it's been here for a while. So all of these are cross barred Venus clams. Very, very common neat little shell and then this ah <laughs> it can go either way it could be just a piece or there have been times where i've unearthed you know like a big old lump of a shark eye so you never know now because i can only come here at low tide yeah i'm gonna need to think about getting out of here because the water will come up i've never gotten stuck over here but I don't ever want to either. This is a spiny jewel box, gorgeous purple on the inside. So sometimes they will have that. So a lovely spiny jewel box. Oh, and garbage. Okay, stuff I can, I can handle. The small stuff, the stuff I can carry, I will carry it off the beach. It's a little piece of garbage I'll take home with me. As well as another chestnut turban. Nice beaded. It's kind of missing its top, but I don't care. I still think it's kind of fun. I'm going to hold on to that shell. So now again, I know that my time is limited. I only have so much time that I can spend here and I'm, <laughs> it's hard. I'm kind of dragging my feet. Like I don't want to leave. Water is so pretty and it's just so fun to be here, but like all good things, my trip here to the beach does need to end at some point. Oh, what a beauty. And of course it's alive because it's big, gorgeous color. So that is a live true tulip. Again, very happy to see my snails and slugs and all the other sea life that I do so enjoy meeting when I come to the beach. So this little part on Marco Island, you can only get around this jetty when the tide is quite low. Right now it's 0.49 and that's really my cutoff of when I can get comfortably around that jetty. Otherwise you are just, you kind of have the rest of this beach, which is really great, but I feel like around the jetty, a lot of this stuff kind of gets stuck there and it's just such a great place to explore. But again, you can only really do it at really low tide. So you will see that there's plenty of people out and about here. And like I'd mentioned in the beginning of the video, I may be spending a lot more time down here because my beaches, Fort Myers Beach and Sanibel are still closed 
and I don't have any indications of when they will be opening. I have a feeling it's going to be quite a while, but I do again feel really grateful that I can at least go to the beach. I'm going to have to do a little bit of driving, but at least I can get to the beach. Now, another thing I was noticing, all these dead spots, I believe that's where debris had been sitting and I'm kind of learning on what areas look like after disasters come through. You'll see the debris on the street. Across the street, when it sits there for a while, it kills the grass. So at least what I think I'm looking at is there did used to be quite a bit of debris here. However, it has been picked up at this point. And, you know, I'm just interested in kind of seeing what things look like. I'm heading a little bit closer to home at this point. So that's where, I'm, you know, that's where the signs are kind of bent half over and Things aren't quite as tidy, but we're going to get there. Now, what little I was able to help, I was able to take 2.95 ounces of garbage off the beach. So in total, I've taken a little over five and a half pounds of garbage from the beaches I visited since I started keeping track back in March. Now, some of the fun things I removed from the beach today, that big old hunk of lightning whelk, and then a couple of the smaller ones, which have that much prettier, richer colors on them. We did get a couple of those pear whelks as well, one of those paper figs, a couple jingles, some of those sunray venus clams. I do see a bay scallop, some of those calico scallops, a prickly cockle, I see a rough scallop in there, that crossbarred venus clam, the spiny jewel box, the channel duck clam, couple of those olives and then of course the fighting conks some of those juveniles which are so lovely let's just skip over to the banded tulips and then a couple lace murex the eastern slipper snail the nutmeg some of the augers and sereths we did get a couple of those top snails the giant atlantic um cockles and then some apple murex the, that's a little bit larger of a horse conch some of those worm snails the florida cones and then the ones I really kind of liked were the larger fighting conks some of those colors the dark rich colors some of those oranges so it was really really fun a lot yeah, and the variety was pretty good um again I'm just grateful to be putting my toes in the gulf and being able to go to the beach you know with everything that's kind of going on down here patreons I cannot thank you enough I know I say thank you I really don't think it's enough but it's all I've got for now Thank you. Thank you so much for supporting me and my community. I hope to be giving you an update about all the fun things that I kind of have planned behind the scenes. I think next week we're probably going to take a step back in time again. So I will try to push information out to you as soon as I can. I just thank you for coming on this journey with me. I hope you have a great week and I will see you again next Sunday.